Hey everybody, it's Terry N 6 tlu Today I'm testing that P&H LA400 amplifier that we picked up about six months ago at a ham fest. So originally this amplifier ran four 1625 tubes in parallel. Well, those tubes were bad and then I found out that the manufacturer actually modified those tubes for operation. So that kind of soured the deal. What we ended up doing was modifying this amplifier to a 572B output tube. So it no longer has the 1625s. So I configured this per some diagrams that I found online that other hams have done with success. But that's not the case here. So let me show you what's going on. And I want you guys to put on your RF engineering hats and maybe give me some ideas of things that I could look for. All right, I'm going to use a Johnson Challenger as the exciter to test the P&H LA400 amplifier. So right now the Challenger is warmed up. I'm going to go to foam position. Here's my plate current. Getting approximately 20 watts out. Now we'll switch over to CW. See my plate current jumps up. We have approximately 50 watts output. That should be plenty of drive for the amplifier. All right, I'm going to do my best to show you what's going on. The issue is, is I cannot get enough output out of this amplifier versus the input coming from the Challenger. All right, so initially, as you saw, I could get 50 watts of CW out of the Challenger. Now, we'll turn on the plate of the linear. I'm going to key up the Challenger in CW. And I'm getting half of my plate current. If I dip, it's going way down to maybe 20 milliamps of current. Okay. Taking a look at the plate meter on the LA400. A very slight rise. Here is the watt meter. I'm getting maybe 10, 20 watts, possibly. And here's the tuning on the LA400. So it is actually tuning. It's trying to achieve RF output, but something is pulling down the RF coming out of the Challenger. So I just can't get any power transfer through the amplifier. And this thing is built to the prints that I found that were successful. Let me cut to that print and then I'll pan across the chassis and you can see the work that I did on the LA400. Well, here's an overview of the work that I performed on the LA400. The four 1625s have been removed and replaced by one 572B. The eight 16 rectifiers are history and these are candlestick diode replacements. This is my new capacitor board. I have five 47 microfarad at 450 volts in series with balancing resistors and fuse protection. All right, let's take a look underneath. Okay, bottom side, we'll start down here. There used to be two power transformers here. One was a 12 volt AC for the filaments of the 1625s. The other was a 2.5 volt AC for the rectifier tubes. Those have been removed and I now have a 6 volt transformer at 5 amps for the filament of the 572B. This is the filament choke which was taken from a Heathkit SB220. I'm only using one of the sockets. Everything else is abandoned in place. I added a 0.01 microfarad cap in series with the RF input jack to block any possible DC from getting back into the exciter. Here is the original RF voltage rectifier system that they used for the front panel meter. Okay, that's the situation here at D-Lab. Tell you guys the truth, I'm kind of stumped at this point. So I am looking for some constructive input. I've already verified the high voltage is fine and I've substituted out the 572. Something is pulling down the RF out of the exciter down to maybe 2 watts from 50. 
So something in this amplifier is drawing that signal down. I have no idea what it is. This circuitry I adopted from other sources online where the guys have done this with the 572 and it was successful. So what am I missing here? Guys, give me some input and if it fixes it, we'll put on another video and I'll shout you out. Thanks.